I really only have one question for you, and that is, are you ready for a high-yield USMLE review of Campylobacter jejuni? Campylobacter jejuni is a major cause of bloody diarrhea. Can you think of any other infectious agents that cause bloody diarrhea? One of them is salmonella, which is acquired through poultry. Another well-known cause is E. coli, specifically. O one five seven H seven, which is infamous for its association with hemolytic uremic syndrome. H U S. We don't want to forget about Shigella, which is the second most common cause. I'll put M C C for H U S. We've got Vibrio para hemolyticus, which is associated with shellfish, and in the question stem, you could possibly be looking out for cruise ships. Vibrio vulnificus is associated also with shellfish, history of liver disease, and skin lesions. Yersinia can cause bloody diarrhea, especially Yersinia enterocolitica, which can be transmitted from pet feces, bad milk, and also pork. Clostridium difficile, C. diff, can cause a body diarrhea, and it's very, very much associated with a history of antibiotics being used on the patient. So these are some other agents that can cause a bloody diarrhea. No blood in the stool, we can be thinking about a viral cause, Giardia lamblia, Cryptosporidiosis, Bacillus cereus, and also Staph aureus. Okay, so Campylobacter jejuni is microaerophilic, and it grows at the hot temperature of 42 degrees Celsius which is equivalent to about 107.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's a pretty hot temperature. It grows on selective media like campy medium or scaro agar. It is fecal orally transmitted through certain foods like poultry, meat, and unpasteurized milk. Another defining feature of Campylobacter jejuni is that it's almost like a comma or S-shaped under the microscope. It's also oxidase positive. And let's not forget that it is indeed gram negative. Let's not forget that either. So in the clinical vignette, they could be talking to you about a patient with inflammatory diarrhea and describing an organism that is gram negative, curved or S-shaped, microaerophilic, oxidase positive, and growing at 42 degrees Celsius in a very selective media. So these are things we have to keep in mind. And I do want to make a note that when I say inflammatory diarrhea, I'm not just referring to blood in there, but also pus as well. That's important. It's a clue in the question stem. Along with the inflammatory diarrhea, the patient can also present with abdominal pain. I'll put abdo pain, fever, malaise, nausea, and vomiting. These things can also be accompanying the diarrhea. The diagnosis is done by doing a culture or that scuro agar that can also be done at 42 degrees Celsius. Treatment is mostly supportive via fluid and electrolyte replacement. And this is because Campylobacter jejuni infection has been known to be generally self-limiting for about three to five days, although it can last longer. And it's been said that medications like erythromycin, which is a macrolide, erythromycin, and fluoroquinolones can be used to treat an ongoing Campylobacter jejuni infection. Campylobacter jejuni, I'm going to go ahead and put just CJ is a common antecedent to Guillain-Barre syndrome and also reactive arthritis. Guillain-Barre syndrome is an autoimmune disease damaging multiple peripheral nerves. Central nervous system for CNS. There is no CNS involvement. So I'm going to go ahead and put AB, a circulating antibody, attacks myelin sheaths of peripheral nerves, PN for peripheral nerves, removing their insulation. Some important clues to be looking out for is weakness in legs that ascend. They move up from feet towards chest. And this is associated with loss 
of deep tendon reflexes, DTR for deep tendon reflexes. A few patients may have a mild sensory disturbance, and the main problem is that when green beret hits the diaphragm, it is associated with respiratory muscle weakness, so the patient will have trouble breathing. Autonomic dysfunction with hypotension, hypertension, or tachycardia can occur, but a huge, huge complication we have to look out for is respiratory muscle weakness. And this can actually be life-threatening. I'm going to make a note that cerebrospinal fluid will show increased protein with a normal cell count. And the most specific diagnostic test is nerve conduction studies slash electromyography. As far as treatment goes, we can do either IV immunoglobulin, I'm going to put IG for immunoglobulin, or plasma phoresis. Either or is equal in efficacy, not both at the same time. We don't want to forget about the weakness. It's ascending, and also I want to add in that it's symmetric, okay? So in the question stem, they need to be describing a symmetric affecting both legs ascending weakness. So we can also see dysarthria and dysphagia in the clinical vignette, and don't forget about that respiratory compromise affecting the diaphragm, especially if it's after a prior respiratory or GI infection as seen in Campylobacter jejuni. Okay, so thank you so much for following along with this. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I just want to close off with a little few tie-ins with reactive arthritis. Campylobacter jejuni can be an antecedent to this. I'm going to go ahead and put RA, not rheumatoid arthritis but reactive arthritis also known as Reiter syndrome. Yersinia and salmonella can also cause reactive arthritis not just campylobacter so those are the GI infections that you can also look out for. Sexually transmitted infections can also cause it along with inflammatory bowel disease and we want to be looking out for a triad of joint pain, ocular findings, so affecting the eye, uveitis and conjunctivitis are things we can look for and there's also going to be erythritis or balanitis. There's no specific test for reactive arthritis. Really, the, the diagnosis is based on that triad that I just described. You can treat with NSAIDs and correct the underlying cause. And if NSAIDs do not control it, you can always go back to sulfasalazine. And steroid injections can also help. Okay, so that is pretty much all I wanted to say on this topic. Thank you so much for checking this out. I really appreciate it. I know I talk a lot. But again, this is all done with the intention of providing reinforcement for the USMLE Step 1 exam. Thank you so much, guys. All the best.